My name is Sarah Teichmann. I'm the head of cellular genetics at the Wellcome Sanger Institute and a member of the physics department here in Cambridge. Thank you for listening to my talk here at the Cambridge University TEDx event. I want to approach the theme of restoration by thinking about the molecular basis of the human body and how we can restore health in patients who are sick. There's an amazing potential for scientists to design new therapies and engineer cells, both for as research reagents and to treat disease. To realize that potential, we need a molecular understanding of the cells in our body, and we need to understand what the cells are in our tissues, what are the cell types in all the different organs. What we need is a map of the human body at the cellular level. How to do it? First, some history. In 2001, the first release of the human genome sequence was made public, with a large and critical contribution from the Wellcome Sanger Institute here in Cambridge. The DNA of the genome is pretty much the same in every single cell in your body. But the genes that are active are very different in a muscle cell from a, a neuron, from a heart cell, and so on. So knowing the subset of genes that are active in every cell is the, the basis for that molecular map. And the technology for achieving that has evolved over the past decade or so as part of the resolution revolution in genomics. Single cell genomics is the technology that allows us to sequence the active genes in every single cell individually, in that tiny volume that's a single cell. So single cell genomics allows us to resolve the active genes and identify the fine-grained details of the individual cell types that, that, are, that constitute a tissue sample. And so what you can see on the slide here is a heart sample that's taken, analyzed by single cell genomics, and then the data is interpreted computationally to define the cell types that constitute that sample of heart tissue. So that reveals basically the, the parts list of the tissue, but it doesn't tell us where the cells are located relative to each other in the tissue. For that, we need spatial genomics, the second technology that's part of this resolution revolution. And that's illustrated on this slide here, where we take a thin tissue section from a, from a heart sample, for instance, place it onto a chip, and then sequence the active genes uh, 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 in the landscape across the grid, the XY coordinate system of that tissue chip. And that gives us the subset of genes that are active at every position in this tissue section. And so taking these two technologies together, the single cell genomics plus the spatial genomics, we now have the technologies to make a map of the cells in a tissue and identify the individual cell types and where they're located. So, so we have those two technologies, but our body consists of an estimated 37 trillion cells. So making a cell atlas of all those cells, it was clear to me that that is a mammoth task and it can only be achieved by the global scientific community working together. And so um, in 2016, I reached out to Aviv Regev, who was then at the Broad Institute in Boston, and together we decided to co-found an international consortium called the Human Cell Atlas. And the Human Cell Atlas project aims to make these comprehensive cellular maps of the tissues in our body at unprecedented resolution and scale. Our community has now grown to over 2,000 members from over 1,200 institutes in almost 80 countries around the world. We're a community of biologists, clinicians, physicists, technologists, engineers, computational scientists, and mathematicians. We're an open community, and we invite everyone to join who's interested in mapping the human body. We're committed to open data, open research, 
ethical research, global equity for the benefit of people everywhere. And this basic understanding of uh, uh, mapping the cells in our body has huge uh, uh, potential also for transforming our understanding of, of human biology and health, but also infection and disease, and laying the foundation for a new era of precision medicine. In my lab at the Wellcome Sanger Institute, we've mapped various organs and tissues, including the lung, the thymus, the skin, the gut, and also human developmental stages to understand how we are made during pregnancy. We've also studied what goes wrong in disease using cell atlas technologies. And in a recent very exciting example, we're working on a heart cell atlas, categorizing the cell types that make up the heart. What you can see in this animation is a beating heart and the conduction system that sends electrical signals through the heart, determining the pace of that heartbeat, is illuminating rhythmically. The cells um, that send the, the initial signal sit inside the sinoatrial node on the top left here, and the cell type that does that is called a pacemaker cell. And if the pacemaker cell doesn't work, um, conditions like atrial fibrillation can occur where your heart doesn't beat at the right pace, which can ultimately be fatal. And so understanding the molecular details and fingerprint of this cell can have profound implications for developing therapeutics for these kinds of, of uh, conditions. The human cell atlas community, we've also tackled unforeseen and emerging challenges. And as, as we're all aware, with the arrival of COVID-19, um, a key question was uh, initially, how does the virus enter the body? And it was known that there are viral entry factors which are, are needed for the virus to dock onto a cell and then enter the cell. And so the cells that would, would contain those viral entry factors would sort of be opening the doorway for the infection into the tissues. And so the human cell atlas community that I've mentioned banded together globally and very rapidly to answer that question of where the viral entry factors could be expressed in the human body. And we shared our data and analyze the data together to map where the viral entry factors are expressed in different tissues in the body. And these are all the tissues here that harbor those viral entry factors. Crucially, they include um, three tissues sorry, that are particularly important um, for the, the early um, uh, disease infection and disease transmission. And those are the eyes, the nose, and the mouth uh, that you can see here. And those findings informed uh, policy thinking around mask wearing and disease transmission in early 2020 when we did this work. Also, in my lab, we've compared the expression levels of the viral entry factors in the nasal uh, tissue as compared to deep down in the lung and found that the, the levels are higher in nasal tissue and that contributes to our understanding of why the Omicron variant is uh, making us less ill than the Delta variant of the virus. So overall, what I'm trying to illustrate with this example is actually that the human cell atlas uh, provides a guidebook for where molecules are expressed in the body, and that can include viral entry factors or other factors related to pathogens. It can include um, uh, genes related to, to syndromes and other diseases. It can include drug targets. So this guidebook, this basic cell map, is a guidebook that guides us towards understanding features uh, um, um, that are important for human health and, and treatment. So the Human Cell Atlas is allowing us to respond to many different challenges, both old and new. And the data coming out of the project is allowing us to learn lots of things about disease. But we can also go beyond the human cell atlas. And the, 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 the molecular rules that we're learning about how cells are made in the body can also 
tell us the rules by which we can engineer cells in the dish. So we can take those rules from inside the human body and bring them into the lab. And in my group and in the biomedical community as a whole, we either use stem cells or cells from primary tissue and then culture them in the presence of, of key ingredients and factors to make cells in the laboratory. And what I, what I argue is that the human cell atlas data can basically inform these experiments and guide us towards which specific ingredients we need to use to mimic our cells in the laboratory in a particularly precise uh, and tailored way. And those cells in the dish can be used to understand hidden mechanisms of development of cells and differentiation. They can be used to test drugs. Um, they can be used to, to, to model and better understand disease. And ultimately, they can also be used as therapeutics themselves, essentially as cell therapies transplanted into tissues to restore them. I'd like to, uh, to end the talk by taking a look into the future. Currently, this process is expensive, laborious, and time-consuming. Wouldn't it be nice if in future we'd be able to make synthetic cells in a fast and accurate way? And there's an amazing technology that could enable this called synthetic genomics. Synthetic genomics has been pioneered in bacteria and yeast, and it, it, what it means is that, that genomes are synthesized chemically, and they can then be uh, inserted as chromosomes into empty shells of cells, and then, um, and then cultured to make cells in the dish in the laboratory. So you can see where I'm going here. What I'm proposing is that we use the human cell atlas data and information to design the synthetic genomes once it's possible to make chromosomes that are the length of, of the human genome, to make um, uh, uh, genomes that are precisely corresponding to um, cells that have features that we'd like that are either present in our body or that have functional aspects of the cells in our body. And these synthetic cells could obviously be used as therapeutics and to restore our health. Um, so the human cell atlas is revolutionizing our understanding of the human body, and that basic understanding is a framework for uh, gaining deeper insights into diseases and how to treat them. It's, a, it's a, a guidebook for where molecules are expressed in the body at the resolution of the individual cell. The human cell atlas data can also be a blueprint for tailoring the design and engineering of cells and tissues in the dish. And it's a really exciting time, and I'm delighted to be here and to be telling you this story um, at this TEDx event on the Restoration Project. Thank you.